Here's an example of a quadratic function that has real roots, but it can't be factored. So we'll have to complete the square. We start as usual by moving the constant term, the 3, over to the right side just by adding that 3 to both sides. Next we divide by the coefficient of x squared so that we make that 1. In this case we divide every term in this equation by 8. So we get x squared minus 20 over 8x is equal to 3 eighths. And we can reduce that 20 over 8, so let's just take advantage of that simplification right now and make that x squared minus 5 halves is equal to 3 eighths. Now we complete the square. We add 1 half of the coefficient of x squared to both sides. So that's 1 half of 5 halves, which is 5 fourths, and we'll square that and add it to both sides. Again, I like to write that as just 5 fourths squared on the left, and on the right, I'll just go ahead and multiply it out as 25 sixteenths. Now while I'm here, I'm just going to change that 3 eighths into sixteenths, so that's going to be uh, 6 sixteenths, so that 3 eighths turns into 6 sixteenths, and then I can just add those two fractions with a common denominator, 31 sixteenths. Next, we can just easily identify the perfect square on the left side because we've written it in a way that makes that very easy. It's just x minus 5 fourths quantity squared. And that's equal to 31 sixteenths on the right. And now we can just take the square root of both sides. So that frees up our x minus 5 fourths on the left from that square. And we'll have the square root of uh, 31 on the numerator, plus or minus, and then a 4 in the denominator. And the 4 is just an easy square root that I can take. And so finally, we solve for our two roots just by moving that 5 fourths by addition to the right side. So we end up with roots of 5 plus or minus root 31 all over 4. And those are the exact roots of this function.